Did ancient Phoenicians discover America thousands of years before Christopher Columbus? That is the question I have been investigating. Combing through countless alleged artifacts, coins, petroglyphs, anchors, and even settlements to get to the bottom of. Right now, the Norse deserve credit for first reaching North America in the late 10th century. The Norse, however, island hopped in the North Atlantic, near the Arctic Circle. They didn't sail across vast expanses of open ocean. I find it worth acknowledging the nature of their discovery of America is unique from that of those who disembarked from the Mediterranean. Next, it's not impossible that at various points in human history, a vessel sailing south of the Strait of Gibraltar could have gotten swept up in a strong westerly current or wind gust, carried out to sea, and ultimately dropped off someplace in South America or the Caribbean. Whichever poor soul stricken by such a calamity, after potentially surviving a lengthy period lost at sea, would have been the first members of the old world to discover America. Unless these sailors understood the flow of the Atlantic trade winds and accumulated the food, supplies, and other provisions necessary to trek a good bit north, then catch the easterly currents and winds back to Europe, whilst not perishing on the dangerous return voyage, they would have died without ever sharing knowledge of their discovery with any person who could pass it along. Castaways aside, the Phoenicians' position as dominant seafarers has been noted by Homer, the Bible, and ancient Egyptian artwork. Artifacts show that their trade routes stretched from Britain to Southern Europe to the north and west coast of Africa to Western Asia. Furthermore, the Phoenicians before Columbus expedition recently designed a fully operational replica Phoenician ship to show that the vessels were capable of crossing the Atlantic. After sailing from Carthage to the Canary Islands, their replica ship left the Old World on November 23rd, 2019, and safely reached port in the Dominican Republic on December 31st, 2019. Having crossed the Atlantic Ocean using nothing but wind, current, sail, and compass. For comparison, on his first voyage across the Atlantic, Columbus left the Canary Islands on September 6th, 1492, and arrived in the Caribbean on October 12th, 1492. These are strikingly similar timelines for ships 2,000 years apart in age from each other. Due to their extensive trade network, seasoned Phoenician merchants, just as Columbus eventually did, may have observed that the winds north of the Strait of Gibraltar generally blew east, while those south of it generally blew west. We know they possessed the technology required to venture across the Atlantic. It's not unreasonable to imagine at least one veteran sailor acquired the trade wind knowledge necessary to ponder a return from whatever lay beyond the ocean's rim. Yet many experts remain doubtful of transatlantic Phoenician activity. Maritime historian Sam Willis says, if the Phoenicians got to England, which we think they did, I wouldn't be surprised if the boat could get to America physically. But whether they could have done it without running out of food is a different matter. Full disclaimer, I am not convinced of a Phoenician discovery of America. However, I do not rule it out and will admit there is curious evidence supporting the hypothesis. The most compelling may be German toxicologist Svetlana Balabanova's discovery of traces of cocaine on several ancient Egyptian mummies' hair in the early 1990s. The only source for cocaine would be the coca plant, which is native to the Americas and not believed to have been present in Africa until after Columbus's late 15th century voyage. Multiple ancient Egyptian mummies sprinkled with cocaine would highly implicate some sort of trade relationship between the Old World and the Americas. Before getting ahead of ourselves, in the book Egyptian Mummies and Modern Science, published by Cambridge University Press, David Council casts immense doubt on the finding. He was part of the Manchester Mummy Team, a project focused on looking at cocaine and other intoxicants in Egyptian society. He writes, the levels reported in Egyptian mummies are very low, below the level agreed upon for a positive result by some laboratories, and at the limit of detection by the technical standards 
for CCMS in the early 1990s. The results are therefore unreliable. He concludes, the possibility of modern contamination cannot be ruled out, but either way, it seems highly unlikely that the ancient Egyptians were exposed to cocaine during their lifetimes. Do with that information what you will. There are countless Phoenician coins that have been supposedly unearthed all over the United States. Most, if not all, have been proven to be hoaxes or fakes. Nonetheless, there is a version of Carthaginian coin which Mark McMenamin, a paleontologist and professor of geology at Mount Holyoke College, believes was minted in 350 BC and bears a map of the Mediterranean with the Americas shown to the west across the Atlantic. A horse can be seen standing on top of the map. Based on this interpretation of the pattern at the reverse bottom of said coin, he has proposed that Phoenician sailors discovered the New World. For those a little lost, Carthage was a Phoenician colony that eventually blossomed into its own respective empire. There's an interesting potential connection with the horse. There exists a legend that when the Portuguese arrived on Corvo Island, a part of the uninhabited Azores archipelago far west of Portugal, they found a statue on the westernmost high point of a man on a horse with no saddle pointing west with his index finger, his left hand gripping the horse's mane. He wore a cloak, and the base of the statue bore indecipherable markings. Later, the king had the mysterious statue disassembled and moved to Lisbon, only to ultimately disappear. Also interesting, a hoard of coins dating back to approximately 200 BC that were allegedly left on the island by Carthaginians was discovered in 1749 in a black vase that had been washed out of the foundations of a building by a storm. I took a look at the coin McMenamin believes depicts a map of the earth featuring the New World. And it does appear to show the Mediterranean with what can be presumed to be land masses on each side of the region. I wonder if those blobs really do represent land. Or, given the reported horse statue, possibly islands. But there's just no way to know. And I'm not even fully convinced of the horse statue's existence. Or that those Carthaginian coins were actually left on Corvo Island by ancient people. Finally, while innumerable Phoenician petroglyphs have been identified throughout North and South America, most, if not all, have been deemed hoaxes or fakes. However, there is a legitimate Olmec petroglyph that features a figure worth analyzing. I can't show the image on this video, but if you Google La Venta Monument 13 Olmec, it should come up. The petroglyph appears to depict a Mediterranean looking man with a beard and exotic headdress. He also appears to be wearing fabricated shoes and holding a flag. According to anthropologist and YouTuber Luke Caverns, the footprint to the left of the figure and symbols to the right denote that he is a traveler. Caverns elaborates, beards, turbans, and pointy shoes are not seen anywhere at all in the Olmec world. Even still, this petroglyph does not convince me of a Phoenician presence in America. All of those observations I just shared, though I may agree with them, are entirely subjective. For all we know, the man's face could be that of a jaguar. The shoes could just be foot fashion for a stylish native person. After combing through so many, really too many, alleged artifacts, coins, anchors, petroglyphs, and even settlements, as exciting as the prospect may be, I do not believe ancient Phoenicians discovered America. However, I do not completely rule it out. In one way or another, it could have been done. The evidence just does not yet exist to support the hypothesis. Let me know, is there other evidence you believe should have been included on this list? If you could do me a favor, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.